Well, they say it is the smallest annual rise in rail fares for four years. But today's 3.1% increase in regulated fares, in line with inflation, is still running ahead of most pay settlements. And one research group, the Campaign for Better Transport, calculates that on current figures, passengers will be subsidizing tax fares within four years. So are the fares really fair? Our business correspondent, Siobhan Kennedy, investigates. The pop of Christmas crackers is still fresh, but there was a nasty little surprise in store for some this morning, as rail commuters woke to find the cost of their season tickets had risen by 3.1%. It's a familiar argument. Train operators say the cost of funding massive investment programmes, upgrading and maintaining lines, all has to be paid for, and it's commuters who have to bear the brunt. The great promise of rail privatisation is that it would alleviate the burden of cost to taxpayers and improve efficiency in services through better competition. Fifteen years on and government subsidies have fallen, yet rail commuters continue to face increases in their fares every year, which many would say are for services that have gradually got worse rather than better. They're not so much concerned about the service, they're just concerned about numbers. Bringing, bringing people on, the more numbers they're getting, obviously the more money they get, as opposed to the service that, they've offered, that they offer. I've seen very little improvement over the years. All that seems to have happened is the price has gone up. You think it's disgusting, why? It's good enough. Because it's, people can't afford to travel into London to you know, earn a living. It's just getting too much for everybody. It feels a bit like a tax, doesn't it, really, by another kind of means. But um, how else do you pay for the infrastructure? And the infrastructure needs upgrading. It's true that stations like King's Cross in London have undergone multi-million pound upgrades. London Bridge too, just look at the difference today. But it's also a fact that successive governments have pushed the cost of funding those upgrades away from taxpayers to passengers who've now faced inflation-busting increases for the past decade. The government did cap today's rise at inflation, but that's the average across all fares, so some routes have risen more. It's true that fares may have risen less than expected, but that'll be some small consolation for commuters on this Bedford to London train, where rail fares have increased by more than 3%. That's compared to an average increase in salaries of just 0.8%. Elsewhere, passengers from Middlesbrough to Newcastle face a 5% increase. Commuters to London from Deal in Kent pay 3% more, pushing their season tickets over the £5,000 barrier, while passengers from Cheltenham Spa to London will see their annual fares rise to just under £9,500. We recognise that no one wants to pay more, uh, um, uh, even though it's funding a, a major programme of investment. And our commitment as an industry is to become more cost efficient in the way that we go about investing in the railways. And that will help governments in future uh, uh, have the option uh, perhaps to do something differently in terms of uh, regulated fare increases. But not many believe regulated fares will come down. In fact, some say the government is actually set to profit from expected future increases. Fare payers uh, are going to be paying over 103% for the operating costs of the railways by 2018. So ultimately that means that government will be profiting from passengers by the end of the next parliament. And we would say that's completely unacceptable. That's as may be, but with the government planning to cut future rail subsidies to less than 25%, it seems the cost burden will remain with rail passengers for the foreseeable future.